All right, everybody, thank you for joining. Uh, this topic is, a, uh, is about uh, saltwater shrimp. Shrimp patterns are a food source. They, they're every, every saltwater fish uh, up and down the coast in the bay, I love them. They, they're high in protein uh, and they're a great pattern. Um, two of the patterns, uh, one pattern, uh, the UV uh, resin pattern is actually a, uh, a, a pattern from uh, Bob, Bob Popovic's where uh, he designed it and I just uh, modified it just a bit for my taste. Uh, he used epoxy, I use UV resin. I throw a little weight on the, on the belly to offset the uh, shell. So I'm going to tie four patterns. I'm gonna tie a Bahama Mama. I'm gonna tie a uh, pink uh, Crazy Charlie. Then I'm gonna tie the UV resin uh, shrimp. And then I'm going to tie a, a pattern that I saw that uh, Barry Barry Clark uh, tied called a uh, ribbon shrimp. Very simple um, materials are used. You go right to your uh, craft uh, for craft uh, store, and and it's basically a spool of uh, organza ribbon. So. So let me get started. Uh, any questions before I start? So I'm using a size four standard saltwater hook. And uh, it's in some cases, uh, it could be considered a large hook uh, for what we are fishing. Uh, but I, I kind of like the uh, size four hook. It works great. And uh, the, I've, you know, one of the one of the things was uh, when I was down in Aruba and I was fishing the UV resin uh, shrimp, I was told that that pattern my size was too big, and that uh, bonefish that you saw in that picture was caught on that shrimp pattern. So that that big bonefish really wanted a big bite. So let me, I'm putting, uh, I'm using pink thread. I'm going to tie the uh, Crazy Charlie uh, pink version. I'm going to put a little thread down and about a, if I separate this into quarter, into, if I break this down, I'm going to put the uh, bead chain eyes right at a quarter of the uh, shank length from the eye. So if I broke this down, it's one, two, three, four. This is the quarter length. So I'm going to use uh, B chain eyes. You could actually use uh, whatever eyes you want. You could use dumbbell eyes uh, or just uh, split shot, uh, split eyes. So, but I'm going to go traditional and use the uh, B chain. And you can get these B chains right at your hardware store. These are uh, what is used for fan when you pull uh, the fan switch. It's, it's uh, crossing figure eights. I hold it in place. So it's cross one direction and cross over. So that's what I'm doing. I'm crossing it. At the same time, I'm holding it in place to straighten them out. And then I'm going to go underneath like a... Uh, like a square lashing that you learn in Boy Scouts to uh, secure the dumbbell eyes in place. And at that point, you could either brush in uh, you could you could brush in uh, uh, Zappagap, Flexment, uh, any one of those types. I'm just going to hit this with a uh, UV resin, such as uh, bone dry, bone dry, you know, because it'll dry a lot faster. And I, I'm not a big fan of uh, Zappagap. I don't like to get it on my hands uh, and on materials. Um, it just keeps uh, clogging up on me. So that that is pretty much uh, secure in place. 
Now the hook will be turned upside down. Clear, ribbing, final rib. But when I tie this in, I'm going to tie it. Actually, I could do it from here. Doesn't matter which way I go. I could tie it right by the eye, but I'm gonna run it along the length of the shank of the hook. This way, I if I just tied it at the bend of the hook, when I went to uh, do the body, it would have a bump. So what I did was I mashed it, uh, I did the whole length of the shank of the hook so that the body will stay uh, pretty much uh, even. Next, I will take four strands of uh, crystal flash. So let me count out four strands of, and I'm gonna use the fluorescent one. I'm gonna take four strands of this. So now, I could wrap this around the body. I'm going to cross over making sure it covers top and bottom. And I'm going to uh, tie that off. Now I'll take the uh, vinyl rib, give it a little pull as I'm doing it. and I'll secure that into place. Okay, next I will tie in the wing using a uh, pink calf tail. Just a little bit past the hook. Uh, bend so think of it about half the gap past I'm gonna trim the butts so uh, so I can get a nice tie I'm gonna hold the cut ends towards me so that when I wrap the thread, it'll pull and make a nice head that when I wrap the thread around it, 
it'll be it'll already be um, tapered. Just want to make sure I put a knot in there. Now I will add four strands of pink crystal flesh to the topping. And now I'll whip finish it. And now I'll add, you could use head cement. So, that is the the crazy Charlie. Simple pattern, uh, just vary the colors and uh, I like to use tan, especially up here for the uh, uh, brownish or tannish uh, colors for up here and the pinks as I go further south. Pink, uh, pink 60 thread. Still using dumbbell eyes, and not dumbbell, uh, B chain eyes. Same, same location. Jerry, is this the Bahama Mama? Yes. And I probably don't tie it like he does. Um, the materials I'm using are just pretty, pretty straightforward. But I like this pattern. Um, I just uh, was testing it out in Egg, in uh, Egg Harbor, New Jersey. And... Uh, caught, caught a little black drum with it. Just playing with it. So once again, it's it's not these these flies are not just for the Caribbean or for bonefish. And I'm sure you use it for reds and speckles, speckle trap by you guys. All righty, so 
get some rubber legs. I'm gonna, I'm just going to use uh, shrimp, uh, crazy legs, uh, shrimp pink with uh, they call it with a pearl flake. So it's like um, you're going up the uh, past the um, bend of the hook on the on the the legs I'm just gonna let them sit out there I'm not gonna I'll trim them afterwards uh, I just want to get a nice now I'm gonna put in black diamond uh, braid orange and this is like the uh, Exact. So I'm basically uh, wrapping this like a tag. to where the uh, barb of the hook is. Now I'm going to take some uh, for the body, just a uh, pearl braid. I'm going to make sure that the first turn is really tight up against the uh, the orange braid. Once again, crossing over and covering the uh, dumbbell eye, uh, the uh, beat Jane eyes. And I'm making sure that I try to keep this as flat as possible. And then I will tie it right in front of the BJ and eyes. Now I'm going to take, uh, I, I like to use, uh, Box fur. Where did I put mine? Put the wing on this. Hey Jerry, before you move to the fox fur, um, was there a, a size call out on that pearl braid? I think they make it in a variety of sizes. What was there something you were using there specifically? I, I'm. This is the package. I just. Uh, That could be a medium wall, I know. It's not the small, but it's just um, how I, I just ordered it just like flat diamond braid pearl. And the same thing with the orange. The orange was the same thing. The thickness, let me hold that up. The 
does that show you any how how thick it is? But it's you know it's it's really flat, like a ribbon. All right. I would probably think that that's medium a medium size. So now I'll turn. Does that uh, does that help? Hey, you all, Jerry. When you showed the the package and it had the um, product number on it, FD. Yeah. Uh, 284 for the flat braid. Yeah. And FD 271. We can order that from Hairline or any of the suppliers. Thanks. Yeah. Some of the hairs you could, I switched over. They had uh, the original pattern calls for uh, bunny hair, like from a zonker strip. And I kind of liked, uh, I had fox uh, tail laying around. So I, I went and started to use the Fox. It has a nice uh, long, long fibers, but it, it's got a nice black in it, cream color, and the guard, and it has a nice uh, guard hairs in here under fur. So that's, that's why I, I went for this. Plus here it was, I was, I really like, I really did like the color. So I'll tie it just like I did the uh, the cap. And I will uh, also tie in uh, the veiling, which is uh, four strands of uh, crystal flash. Just a little long. Come on, I hit the. Just going to make the veiling just a little longer than the hair. And then I'm going to make the tail about the length of the shank of the hook and then another half. Violate the fundamental rules of uh, Jerry, do yeah. you ever tie? Do you ever tie the crystal flash under the wing? I, I don't see why not. Um, I'm just going by uh, the recipe at that point. Uh, I don't see why you can't change it. In my opinion, you know. Now this fly, you know, people have asked me, can you tie this fly in, in this direction? I've never had to, uh, but I know people have tied it upside inverted, but uh, I, I've never had to. So first I'm using, I'm, I'm basically using a, uh, a 3-0, Mono cord white. Is this the same size hook again, Jerry? Yeah, I'm using size four for everything. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so this fly has um, this shrimp pattern 
has what is called a uh, like a beard, a mouth. So I'm going to take this is this is just uh, supreme white hair. Uh, you could use uh, any type of uh, even EP fibers, which I think is a little softer. But the super super hair is pretty good for this. It's a little just a little stiffer, and it has on uh, some reflective uh, mark uh, quality to it. The mouth section is usually about the length of of the hook, so I will. Measure it, extend over the band. Just tie it in. You don't have to worry about the uh, uh, bumps or anything because you I'm going to be using uh, ice dubbing for the body. So that's basically the mouth. One of the things uh, to offset the UV resin, I take, this is a lead-free uh, wire. This is a 0 .30, 0 .030. I tie this under the bottom on the underside of the shank. Uh, and I'm not just using one strand. I'm going to put another strand right underneath this one. So that's one strand I put there. And then I'm going to put another strand there also, right on top of that one. But I'm going to take it, I'm not gonna tie it right on top of it. I'm sliding it a little bit further down. Reason, reason why I started doing that, uh, I originally didn't put lead on the bottom to offset the weight. And when I put the, uh, the UV resin on the top, it's, it, it flipped over on me when I was fishing it. And I says it really needed a, uh, an offset the weight from the top. Another next, um, uh, I'm going to uh, tie in some mono eyes. I'm using 50 pound mono. I'm going to show you how I make one. I've already made these. So what I do is I'm going to back the camera down. Here's the monofilament 
50 pounds. And I touch it with the blood, with the uh, flame. Now I have a ball. I touched it too soon. So now I have a ball. Take a little UV resin. This, this is uh, the brand that this is, is uh, Solaris. And this is their hard, not the medium and not the thin. So it goes on really thick. So now I have a ball of UV resin, let it drip down, and then it's going to harden immediately. Where did I put the marker? Then I'll take a Sharpie. Or I'll stick, uh, stick this in uh, black lacquer paint. Or I'll take black uh, UV resin and do the same thing. And do this, but I'll, I'll coat that with the Sharpie. And I'll take some more resin just to protect that. Ball. And that's basically the eye um, for the shrimp. So you have a choice. You can either buy them already made or make them yourself. So I will I'll just tie them. Basically almost on each side of the the fly. Okay. Then I would take a bodkin or needle and I heat it. Now that it's hot, I could bend the eye into the position I want it to I want it to go on an upward upper upper path. Okay. So we got the eyes, we got the mouth. Now we got we're gonna put the legs in. You can either use any kind of hackle. I like to use grizzly because it's got um oh if i'm tying a, a tan or tan or brown shrimp i'd use brown if i'm using 
olive. I would use olive, uh, uh, but I want to make sure that the hackles really don't exceed too far past the uh, point of the uh, hook. So let me make sure. Yeah, that's good enough. Pull it. and secure the feather in place. Okay, now I'll take, I'm going to use just regular ice dubbing. Uh, UV pearl for this fly. I've kind of started to really like using UV uh, dubbing for salt water because I started to, to see how it uh, reflects in the water. and everything. Okay. Now I'm going to take the hackle, spiral it, even spacings. Just leaving a little bit of uh, nubs on the top for the uh, resin. Now I'm gonna put the, start building the shell and um, some uh, feelers. Now, Jerry, that's an entire length of the Supreme fiber. Yeah. But as you see, I'm starting to double it over. Mm -hmm. So it's like two times the length of the shank of the hook. One, 
two, and I'm still going to trim this. Like this tail. Just want to. All right, I got. What color is that? It's premier. White. It is white. And then you can vary it for tan, olive, and even pink if you wanted to. So now, some crystal flesh for the top. Four fibers. And now I'm gonna whip finish this. I'm using dark and you don't have to. You could go pearl, you could go uh, rainbow, crystal pearl. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, putting, just putting the dark there for uh, the digestive tract, the canal there. I don't think it makes a difference, but it looks pretty cool. So now I'm when I go to layer this, I'm gonna take some of this hard uh, UV resin. And at the end of the bottle. And I'm going to lay that right on the bottom. It's in between the body and the, uh, I want to just call it the wing. And I'm going to, it's going to get cemented right to the body. Okay. Now I'll take and now I'm going to build the shell. This, this light has a oscillating uh, light, so it just does it. It'll heat it up and then shut off so it doesn't burn it, creating vapors in the air. So when you see that smoke, uh, that's really not too good for you, the tire, or... Uh, the fly. I just want to make sure. Okay, let me see how that's looking.
Okay, just a little more. Jerry, you may have to move, zoom out again at the end there to show us how you trim. Oh, there you go. Yep. To trim that uh, that one side of the 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 backing. Sure. What I did was I cut, this is about uh, one and a half length, okay? And all I did was just cut at an angle, but I, I want these just a little longer. Not by, you know, that's up to you how long, but, and the, And all I'm doing is just building the shell. Hmm. Always go in the direction of your materials. Don't go against them. All right. So that's basically the shrimp pattern. Where the e uh, UV, UV shrimp. Do you fish that any differently than the previous two shrimp? No, I fish them all the same. Uh, I let it. This one, actually, this one did go deeper uh, in the in in Aruba. Um, all right, this this was an odd odd pattern, but you know what? The organza is really really reflective, and a whole. The whole pattern is basically, all right, come on, where is the end of this? So you go into a craft store, uh, a Hobby Lobby, Michael's, and all this is is a spool of ribbon. This ribbon has organza throughout the whole weave and it's got a weld on both sides so the material is the organza there's lengths and fibers in here of crossing uh, lengthwise and horizontal so that's all this this fly is so let me uh start getting started with it. Uh, the first part he cuts cutting the weld off So that's one side cut and then cut the other side off. Jerry, how long of a piece are you cutting off of there? Or is it still attached to the ribbon, uh, to the spool? 
and it's not attached to the spool anymore. Um, I'm just trying to show you how, where the fibers are that we're going to pull. All these ones that are cross, I'm going to try, I'm going to get these long ones here. You see them? By me just pulling the, the, uh, the ones that are woven horizontally. And honestly, what I what I have is is way longer than I really need. But the object is, I need these long fibers. So I got a really. If I looked at it, it's one, two, almost three and a half, three lengths of the shank of the hook. I'm taking about the length of the shank of the hook. Well, it would help. First, let me get my thread on. So. Same thread as last time? Yeah, I'm just using 3.0. So I'm tying it at the bend. So I got some sticking out already. And I'm just going to add just a little longer than the ones, than the two that are there, not by much. And I'm going to secure that right at the bend. So think of this as like the mouth. Okay. So that's. Like how we did the. You think of uh, how we did the UV resin. Well, this is the same type, okay? It's the same, same part of the shrimp. All righty. Yeah. Next, I've already cut this, but let me give you an idea. You're going to. Take a piece of uh, uh, rib, uh, ribbon, and you're going to cut it where at a di diagonal to get long fibers to short fibers. And then I'm going to remove all these fibers that are crossing over. So I did all of that earlier and I created a a ribbon hackle is what uh Clark uh uh Bobby Clark Bobby O'Clark Clark uh, did and he uh here's the ribbon hackle okay so we want to have all these fibers facing towards the bend. So I'm going to secure that at the bend. But my next step is he also offset his uh, fly by adding by adding uh, lead 
to the bottom. So his first couple of tur um, turns is right two. I'm going to do three. And now I'm going to just secure this to keep for the next part of the fly. He also added shrimp eyes to the pattern also. Just make sure that's nice and secured in there. Also, now we put a uh, layer of dubbing for the body. You're using that ice dub again? Yep, I love it for, for, for the shrimp patterns. I have it for olive, I have it for tan, I even have it for a uh, light pink. There's just something about it, uh, the property of when it hits the water. Sometimes I'll even use uh, a UV resin that uh, glows in the dark. So when it gets under muddy or dark conditions, it'll emit a green uh, you to it. You see how nice and this, this, this fly is a little thinner uh, compared to what I tied earlier for the UV resin fly. I think it's got a nice shape for a uh, A shrimp too. Okay, I won't lose that. Now, you just start uh, tying this. And now you'll start to see how the fibers from the organza
really make some nice legs on that. And also that organza, I don't know if you could see the reflective properties in that. It's like, it's like tying with crystal flesh on how it uh, just keeps sparkling. So there's the, the body. Where did I just put that? All right. So now we got to make the shell. I took a, uh, I cut the ribbon the welds on both of them. And I made this to be a uh, longer, wider than the body, but I wanna make sure that this much is the body, okay? So I wanna take all of these cross ones off So I'm going to tie this, all of these fibers sticking, all these hairs, these uh, threads sticking past the bend of the hook. And I'm going to tie this right at the, behind the eye. And then I'm going to whip finish this. I'm going to take the UV resin. And I'm going to lay it on the back of that rib ribbon. And then I'll just trim these out of the, do a, a different uh, length. There's the, there's the shell, there's the eyes. And if you need to bend those eyes, you can hit them with uh, just a little heat. Okay. Jerry, roll it over and give us another a 90 degree view of it to see how those eyes are splayed out. Okay, so you didn't splay them too far. You, you just pulled them up. Okay. Yeah, I just pulled them up. Okay. But it's a nice smaller pattern uh, for, for this shrimp.
<laughs> yeah, jo- Joanne's fabric. That ends up being the uh, the new fly shop sometimes. All right, how's that? Those are the four shrimp patterns that I like to use. Any okay. any, any questions? <laughs> Wow, nobody's got anything. Did you enjoy it? Let's uh, let's say that. Oh yes. Okay, good. That's all I care about. As long as you enjoy it. Hey Jerry, this is Jim Moss. Yes, Jim. Would you talk a little bit to how you weighted the fly with the lead and why? Uh, the the reason I put it under the body and and I did that for the U. Anytime I'm using the UV res. When you don't put any weight on that fly, the resin is heavy on the top. It rolls. So what I'm doing is I'm countering the weight of the resin with uh, the lead strips on underneath to make sure it doesn't roll. All okay. right. And the resin is pretty heavy on the on one side, so it always uh, will go right to the to the the resin will go to the to the We'll roll it over. By putting the the weight in, it'll keep it pretty much even. Okay. But on but on all these flies, Jerry, you were you were fishing them hook point down. Those two. The last two I am. Okay. The other two I'm not. The hook point uh, up. Yep. The B chains are on the opposite top side. side. Top side, and it'll flip it, and that wing. If you looked at the, how the crazy Charlie is and how the Bahama Mama is, they touch the hook point and they're almost weedless. Yeah. Sometimes a bead chain, especially for the bigger hook sizes, may not flip it over. That's you when you go to, go to a lead a barbell, dumbbell. A dumbbell, yeah. 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 That's what, and these are just size four, so I can get away with the bead chain uh, eyes. For, for the last, for the first two. Okay. Anything else? All Thank right, everybody. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I'll put out, I'll, I'll edit this and get this out. I'll get the material listing and I will make sure that everybody has everything that I've done and be able to tie it themselves. All right. Your and next, uh, your your next uh, session will be on the twenty eighth of February. That uh, is correct. Yeah, the, yep. yeah. Let me just make sure it should 28th be twenty eighth February. It's the fourth uh, Tuesday. Yes, it is. That'll be. That's it. I'm trying to. I'm um, thinking about either doing streamers or. Uh, the uh, 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 dry fly uh, wing materials. So I'm kind of tossing between two of them right now. All right. Streamers, I want to do like a, uh, I want to start off with just a regular straight bucktail, uh, black nose days. And then I want to go over into a, uh, Thunder Creek, and then I want to do a fly that uh, incorporates uh, a uh, Matuka and deer hair spun on the same fly. Um, I want to do, hopefully I can do it, it's uh, the Whitlock uh, sculpin, and that usually takes me at least uh, 30 minutes to tie. It's got so many steps in it, but it shows so many variations of, of a streamer. And it's a really good fly. All right. All right, everybody. If uh, no more questions, um, Tom, I will get the recipes uh, uh, before uh, later. Uh, I'll send an email out to everybody with all the recipes on this. All right, Tom. All right, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Jerry. We'll see you next month. Thank you again for coming. Thank you, Jerry. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Bye now.